Oko. Hey Sparkles, what's up? Today's video will be my contribution to this year's mermaid. I wanted to make the biggest mermaid doll, but ran in tremendous trouble when trying so. However, before we get into the troublemaking, make sure to like, subscribe and comment if you enjoy my content. It really helps a lot. Seriously. And now let me show you the process of this doll and how I solved the problems in the end. So today's doll I'll be working on is this Anomaly Zombie Smart Doll. I have been wanting to get one of these for ages and I'm so happy I could finally find one secondhand. This is the priciest doll I have ever bought, but I just love the blue skin so much and I thought she'd be a perfect candidate for a mermaid themed doll. So let me first show you my attempts of making her an actual mermaid. For the base I will be using another smart doll body to make a base for the tail. Oh my goodness! I tried to make some kind of beam for a wired and wrapped tail base to attach to, but after wrapping it it looked like this and more like a mummy. Okay, so um, short update. Um, nothing works! Here is attempt number two where I wanted to give her a fully ball jointed tail attached to a fabric base. And here is attempt number three that literally just looked like a stuffed toy in the end and I just really hated it. Here you can see me trying to make the ball jointed tail working once more, but nah, this ain't a chief. And finally I was like, okay, let's just make a fabric tail covered with silicon scales. I printed and primed this mold and tried casting some silicone for the scales and guess what? It didn't work. Uh, I tried uh, to cast the silicone scales and even though I primed everything, nothing cures. And I am actually running out of time at this point. So I think I have to shift plans completely. And I'm gonna make a mold myself now and not make a whole mermaid tail, but make it a bit differently. Just make a fish girl with fins or something like that. I'm gonna figure something out. I'm gonna make this work somehow, even though it might not be a classical mermaid, but I'm not giving up. Never give up. Never give up. Okay, let's do this. All right, back to the drawing board. I came up with this mock-up and I really liked the compromise of a mermaid inspired girl that kind of looks like she's going to a festival. So let's give it a try. First, let's make her a bra. For that, I first sew the darts of the pattern I made finished sides in. After that, I will be snapping the upper cup seam allowance into little pieces and glue them around with the Uhu glue stick. This glue is awesome for seams, but I don't give any guarantee for washing the clothes. Looks good! Here I already cleaned up the bra band and can now take the cups and attach them to the bra band with my best buddy, the Uhu all-purpose glue. I glue the cups slowly to perfectly align them. And after both cups have been attached, I snap the lower seam allowance of the bra band and also glue it around. To be able to attach some straps, I prepared these little rings on satin ribbons and will now just attach them with some Uhu glue to the bra. I do that three more times and set the bra aside for now. Alright, time to make a mold that works with silicon. I used some polymer clay now. I wanted to first cast all the scales individually and glue them together for a finished look on the clothes. So I rolled out the clay and made some indents with the end of a brush. I made some more and baked them in the oven. Now for the fun part, mixing some silicone with glitter and pigments. One little scoop de scoop. Where is my scoop de scoop? One little scoop de scoop. Pink. After successfully acquiring the scoop de scoop, I'm. <laughs> After successfully acquiring the scoop de scoop, I mixed a nice pink and will now drip it into the molds and let it cure for about six hours. This needs to cure now. Thank 
legs crossed. Okay, so the mold worked, but the idea of gluing the scales individually didn't. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, it worked! Oh my god, it worked. Alright, I now made another mold that has a whole scale pattern on it and I will try casting this in silicon. So again, mixing component A and B in the cup and adding all the pigments and glitter. This time I'm aiming for a nice light sea green. And add some white glitter to it and some holographic glitter. Two shots of vodka. Almost perfect. See that? But it looks so nice. Battery empty! Just a little dot of dark green missing and let's pour this into the mold. Okay, it's the next day so let's see if this worked. Some of the silicon ran under the mold, but it did in fact work. Yay! All in all, it's really nice though. So for the next casts, I just secured the edges a lot more, so I won't have as much trouble with the silicon going everywhere. And hope this way it won't uh, run underneath the mold. That would be nice. But this still turned out really, really nice. Really pretty. Alright, let's make one more mold. This one I will make from this shell I found in my stash. I just make a negative imprint of it into some cast clay and bake it in the oven for 30 minutes. Then I powder it and use some more clay to make a positive imprint again. And then press it in firmly. Just need to clean up and baking now. I will bake it on a little sphere of aluminium foil so it will have a rounder shape. Okay, now we have all the pieces missing for the bra, so let's continue on it. I attached some test straps to the bra for now, so I can glue on the scale parts first. <laughs> Ew! For that, I will use some Macaulay caulking silicone in a gun. I spread the glue on the bra and I spread the glue on the bra band and glue on the scales. This needs to dry for about a day, so let's make some fins for the outfit. I sketched out some shapes for the bra and the panties on paper and now roll out some cos clay. I insert a little wire to the top and bottom boning, so it will be easier to attach the fins to the outfit later on. Then I just shape them according to my sketch and bake everything in the oven. After they were cute, I paint them purple with my Levener Posca marker. Now I just need to stick the fins onto a slightly sticky vinyl and will use my soft resin. This way the fins will stay flexible, which makes them less likely to break. I mix some soft resin with pigments and glitter and apply that to the inside of the fin. And then use some clear resin for the outer parts of the fin. After curing it under the UV lamp for about 10 minutes and also glossing the backside, whoops, it looks like this. Now that the fins are done and the bra is cured, I can attach them to the bra. I basically just bend the wires in shape and sew it on with some hand stitches and do that on both sides. Time to paint the bra cup shells. I wanted to give them a purple pink gradient. Could I have used my airbrush for that? Possibly. Am I too lazy to clean up the airbrush afterwards? Absolutely. So I will try to blend the colors with a wet on wet technique. After a small eternity, it actually looked way better than I thought it would. For the last touch, I just apply some pearly pink shimmers and seal them. Awesome! Time to glue the cups onto the bra! For gluing polymer clay and fabric, a good strong PVA glue is recommended. So that's what I'm using here and let it dry for a couple hours. I was so free and started decorating the bra already off cam. Basically, I just glue a bunch of rhinestones and chains to it and use either PVA glue or silicon. Because nothing else sticks to silicon than silicon. Some of the bra chains will attach to the upper arms, so for that I made some upper arm bracelets with cos clay. 
I now just have to paint them purple as well and attach a tiny golden ring for the chain to hook on later. And this is how they will look on the arms later. Thanks to the flexibility of cosplay, they work fantastic. And here's the finished bra. It's so sparkly and dazzling and I really, really love it. All right, let's make her panties. For those, I first sew the darts on the back sides, finished sides in. After that, I pin the back sides to the front piece and hem them as well, finished sides in. Looks good. Now I cut the bottom and top seam allowance in pieces and glue everything around. Next step is to sew together a part of the back seam, finished sides in. And then it's just the crotch seam missing. So for the big shell on the panties, I made a silicone mold from the golden shell because I wanted it to be totally flat. I then used my soft resin and cast the shell in it, letting it cure for about 10 minutes under the UV lamp. After it was hard, I can easily demold it and then I just needed to paint it the same way I painted the bra cups, just with the colors reversed. I ended up making the panties a second time, this time in pink, and I already attached the side fins to them. I also made some more scales and will now glue them onto the panties with some silicone. And here's the panties shell all painted and ready to be attached to the panties. For gluing the shell I will be using some PVA glue again and let it dry for a while. Afterwards I will glue on these chains that I already prepared with some PVA glue as well. And then to add the same amount of detail to the pants, I will add a bunch of rhinestones. And boom, <laughs> doesn't it just look so cool? To finish up the panties and cover up the ugly top part, I will sew on this golden chain. And here are the panties all done. This must be the most elaborate bikini that I have ever made. <laughs> Okay, since I said goodbye to a classical mermaid doll, let's make her some shoes. I printed the shoe bases on my Elego Mars 3 printer in clear blue UV resin. The base was actually from my own doll Lila, I just sized it up to fit smart doll feet. Here I'm just breaking off the supports before washing and curing them in my curing station. To make her some summer vibe sandals, I will use golden chains and first attach one around the foot through the sole. I cut it to the right length and then just glue the sides to the shoe base with some super glue. Then I prepared some more straps and will slowly build up the sandal by attaching them to the front ring. Already looks like sandal! For some more detail, I painted some white pleather purple and will attach a small piece to the side of the sandal first. Then I attach another chain that will go around the leg to it and check so that it has the right length. Then it's time to add a long stripe of PU leather to the side part that will also end with a chain that will go around the leg just underneath the knee. And for the finishing touch I will be adding some fins that I made the same way I made the other fins. I just apply some super glue to them and attach them to the long PU leather stripes on the sandal. And here the sandals are done! I know it's hard to imagine how they look in the end, but just wait for the final presentation. For her hair I will be using this jumbo braid and will first straighten it with my hair iron on low temperature and make wefts from it. 
Skipping forward to after doing so and making a wig cap, I can then proceed to glue the wig. I start in the very back of the head and glue weft by weft to the cap. If necessary, I straighten some wefts a little more because I want the hair to be silky. And then I just add weft by weft, layer by layer to the wig until I reach the parting line. Then it is time to cut the parting line so I can insert some folded around wefts. This is a little tricky and I'm using my Uhu glue for that because I did not want to burn my fingers with any more hot glue. And after that was done I can give her some mermaid like curls with my curling iron on low temperature. The key here is to remove the iron after curling and leaving the curl curled up in your hand until it's cooled down. I did that for all the hair and it just looked very very pretty in the end. But I think she also needs a headdress, so let's make her one. I already prepared the fins for it and printed this headband that I found on the Prusa website for free and just resized it. I'll leave the link in the description box. I simply glue the fins onto the headband. I then place the headband on the doll head. And then I prepared some chains with a charm and will now super glue everything to the headdress. I also made these longer chains for the side part and attached them with super glue as well. And then I just finished everything up with some rhinestones. And this is the finished headdress. Okay, finally face up time. First of all, let's remove everything so we have a blank canvas. After washing and sealing her with MSC, I apply some shimmer first before applying some pink blushing to her face and also blushing her lips with a small brush. And then it's time to sketch out the eye lines with a brown pencil first. This step takes the longest because you want the lines to be as good as possible. I then need to mirror the lines to the other eye and afterwards can start sketching out the graphic liner lines with some colored pencils. This step was really relaxing but I really took my time with it to make them look neat. After everything was sketched out I then finally could go in with some paint. First I'm painting the brown parts black with some matte acrylic black paint. And then I go in with all the colors for the graphic eyeliner parts and fill in the sketched lines. But she still needs some eyebrows, so I'm mapping them out with a blue pencil first and fill them in with paint after. Now, how about some rhinestones for her face too? I think it would fit the overall look perfectly and give her some more sparkle to the face. It looks so so pretty already. And last but not least, I apply one layer of gloss. I just wanted them to appear more semi and not high gloss this time. Now just some fitting eyes are missing. Using my sphere mold, I apply some resin to the bottom of it, add some glitter and place the iris upside down to it. I cure that for about 2 minutes in the UV lamp. Then I mix some white resin pigment into the UV resin and drip it on top of the eye into the mold. And then it goes under the UV lamp again for about 5 minutes. Alright, let's demold it! Ah, oh, they turned out absolutely perfectly, yay! And here are both eyes done. I really really love them. And this is how they look in the doll head. I'm absolutely living for this look. And with that guys we are done. Are you as excited as I am for the doll?
here she is in all her glory. Sometimes we have to take setbacks and failures in order to grow, I guess. And I actually almost like this doll better than a classical mermaid now. What do you like about her? Please let me know in the comments below. Also, thank you again to all of my patrons and Twitch subs. You guys help me so, so much. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful creative day. Bye!